Hi, I'm Terrence, and welcome to another episode of Space Coast Tortoise. Uh, today, I wanted to expand upon pyramiding and hyperparathyroidism, also known as MBD, metabolic bone disease, and what you can do to prevent it in young tortoises and to hopefully correct the growth, new growth in older tortoises. So what is pyramiding? Pyramiding is essentially the excessive upward growth of scoots on a tortoise's carapace or shell. The scoots are the individual segments on the shell. This can often result in pyramid-like structures forming on the carapace, which is extremely unhealthy. When it's minimal, it's not really that big of an issue, but some cases uh, can be pretty crazy. Now, pyramiding is more than just a lumpy shell. Uh, it can actually affect the spine normal lung function uh, in females. It can cause issues with egg laying. And uh, it can also affect the limbs and their stride, which can cause arthritis later on down the line and uh, sometimes paralysis, unfortunately. Now, what causes pyramiding? Um, that can include low humidity, overfeeding, uh, excessive protein and fat, an imbalance of calcium and phosphorus, also known as uh, secondary nutritional hyperparathyroidism, MBD. Uh, not enough exercise, genetics, uh, they can be predisposed to it, unfortunately. Environmental influences, such as being kept outside of the species' preferred temperature. Uh, inadequate water intake and lack of ultraviolet light. Now, tips to help you hopefully avoid this altogether or correct new growth. Uh, would be to ensure proper humidity levels for your species of tortoise. Uh, this has been scientifically proven to be the most significant factor in captive tortoises. Uh, young growing tortoises need at least 60% humidity for most of the day and also need access to 90% humidity in a humid hide as desired for natural shell growth. You'll also want to provide clean water daily, um, mist enclosure or run humidifier for a few hours a day. You'll also want to soak one or more times a day for at least 10 to 15 minutes minimum. Uh, provide the correct diet per species. Provide all day access to food rather than set meals. Uh, but you also want to provide the right foods as not to promote overfeeding. You'll want to feed plants and greens with a high bioavailability of calcium, uh, like spineless prickly pear cactus, for example, is high in calcium. Um, otherwise, you'll want to supplement the diet with a um, calcium supplement. Zoo, I believe ZooMed makes one with uh, vitamin D3, which helps them absorb the calcium. You'll want to encourage exercise by providing a large enclosure to roam. Um, and you'll also want to institute environmental enrichment, like you can uh, create a list of all the tortoise safe plants that you can grow and you can plant all of those in the enclosure. Um, any new object added in the said enclosure would um, pique their curiosity and they will actually go and check it out. Just want to make sure you keep these guys happy. You'll also want to be sure that you keep them in the correct temperature gradient per species. Uh, the sun is best, however there are lights that provide an adequate amount of heat and UVB, UVA. And finally, if the environment is too cool, uh, it will actually affect your tortoise's ability to metabolize its food as they're entire metabolism is based on thermoregulation. That's all folks for today. I uh, hope you learned something and um, hope it's something that you can apply to your own tortoise keeping. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. If you're still watching, I feel like I should mention that I have a merch store launched on teespring.com under Space Coast Tortoise. Um, all proceeds go to the tortoises and it will help offset feeding costs um, possibly expanding to other species to further education. If you're interested, you can find the link in the video description below.